What's up, guys? This is Coach Grant with First Down Training, and today we're going to be breaking down one of the best route runners in all of college football. So I hope this video helps you guys out. Hope it could teach you a few new things. But also, fellas, if you are a wide receiver or a quarterback and would like to train with us this offseason, we are going to be traveling out to 12 more states for two-day-long QB and wide receiver training camps. Next up on our camp tour, we'll be coming out to Charlotte, North Carolina. That camp is completely sold out. But then we'll be coming out to Dallas, the DMV, St. Louis, Honolulu, Boston, Cleveland, Austin, Seattle, Newark, Denver, and Los Angeles, California. So if you guys want some more information on that, how you can sign up to train with myself and my staff of coaches, check out that very first link in the description below. We'd love to have you there. Let's get started with this video. So we're going to be breaking down some routes here from Josh Downs. This is a wide receiver out of North Carolina. He declared for the draft this year. We're going to talk about why he's got some of the best routes in the country, and I'm really excited to see how he develops. So this first example here is going to be like a one-step whip route. So this one-step whip route is very similar to a regular whip, a regular pivot, however you guys call this route. And we're going to be breaking down a few other explosive routes that he runs throughout this video and some clips from him in high school. So when he runs, anytime you're running a whip route, right? So what is a whip for those of you that don't know? Some of you might have different terminology. It's where you break to a slant and then you whip back out to the sideline, but you keep your hips and your shoulders facing the quarterback right? So anytime that you're doing a double move, whether it's an out and up, whether it's a post corner, that first move that you run, you have to make sure that we sell this thing with speed and with body length. Right, So that's the only way that's going to get a DB to bite, especially a DB who's lined up inside shade on the goal line. He's going to try to stay as disciplined as possible and not get beat to the inside. So if I'm running a whip route, that's a great route for me because I could try to threaten him with that whip and that might really actually get him to move. Man coverage on the goal line does not want to give up the inside route, but I got to be a salesman first. And that's exactly what Downs does. So he comes up off the route. When he breaks to the slant, there is a change. He kind of gives this little hezzy tempo and then he accelerates to the slant. Because that change of speed is what's going to get a DB to react. Anytime that you guys run a double move and then you break to the inside and there's no speed, you're taking choppy steps, you're running slower because you're trying to prepare for the break, that's not going to get a DB to bite. Being a salesman on routes comes down to three things, your body language, your stride, and your speed. On this case, because it's a one-step whip route, he's just breaking off the left and then dropping right now. It's more about that change in speed, more about that burst, and committing that upper body. DB's eyes and man coverage are on the upper body. So if your hips don't commit to the slant, he ain't going to commit to the slant. Now, when you are doing that, you got to be able to change direction on a dime. So if you're running a whip route, that's a very tough break because it involves you having to drop your hips. It involves having an explosive like level change, as I call it. So a lot of wide receivers struggle with this. They'll run a whip route, but they take about eight steps right here. They beat the drum with their hands. It takes them an hour to get out of the break and the DB's all over it. He can recover. They might even sell the route correctly. So what we have to do is we need a violent drop of my hips. There are two specific keys to getting in and out of a break when going full speed. And that's number one, dropping your butt down like you're sitting in a chair. So many wide receivers think that, oh, I just got to drop my upper body down into a break. But what they'll do is they'll essentially bend at their waist. Their chest will go way ahead of their knees and they'll drift forward. Because when you have that kind of speed, like we should have to sell the route, and you break, but you're not dropping your butt down, you will not decelerate. To decelerate on a dime, we have to think of it like you're sitting in a chair. I say it all the time. When you're at school and you're sitting into your desk, you don't sit down chest first. You sit your butt down first, right? So we need to sit down. Now, we don't want to do this and have my chest be straight up in the air because that's going to cause me to lean back. And instead of falling forward with a ton of speed, I'm going to fall back with a ton of speed and be off balance at the break. So a good spot to try to get to, I tell my guys, you want to try to bring your chin to your knee. If you guys can sit into a chair, bring your chin to your knee, like literally try to touch it. There's a string attached and you're pulling the string down. That could put you in a position where you can put the brakes on and still be able to sell your route, which gets you separation. That's why I think Downs is super explosive. His cuts are insane. His cuts are smooth and it's very subtle. It's not super creative stuff. He's not doing fancy stuff. He's moving efficiently. And that's what it takes to be successful at the next level. You look at the best route runners in the NFL, Justin Jefferson, Devontae Adams, Stephon Diggs. All those guys don't do complicated stuff, especially Devontae Adams because he gets a lot of publicity for it. It's not complicated. It is very simple, but he is very effective in the way he runs the route. And that's what I see with down. So let's play this again, full speed one more time. Great job selling that one-step whip and getting in and out of that break as quick as he can. Obviously, you need a better ball from the QB. So 
Next example we're going to be talking about here is a post route versus this inside shade off man coverage. Now, this is a very awkward example, and this is something that they look for at the next level. Like if you're a high school guy, they look for you to be able to run this route against this specific look, especially if you're in the NFL. They're looking for college guys who can run these like uncomfortable routes versus uncomfortable coverage looks. So this is inside leverage coverage, and we have to run a post route. That route is right into the DB's leverage, essentially where he is trying to protect. So let's play this full speed, and then we'll break it down. So Downs does a great job of a tempo change, accelerating, and then being able to get that leverage and win on that post. So let's talk about it, right? If I got inside shade coverage, the mistake that a lot of wide receivers will make is they will try to essentially square up the DB or stem the DB. So the stem of the route is like the portion where you're getting vertical right before the break point, right? So the terminology he's going to stem the DB is where he's going to angle his stem to the inside and try to step on the toes of the DB. Now, we got to think about this pre-snap. Every single snap, a, a wide receiver needs to identify this, these three things how close or how far the DB is, what's his leverage, and what's the type of coverage. So the type of coverage is based on his stance and his eyes. Eyes are looking at us, and he is in this squared stance. Chances are it's man. Could he disguise it? Yes, but chances are it's man. Where is he shaded? He's shaded to the inside. Okay, how far off is he? Maybe about six or seven yards, five to seven yards, I'd say. Okay, that looks like off-man inside coverage, and that's how it dictates how you run the route because we know that he's trying to take away the inside based on his leverage. So if I just stem him to the inside, he's just going to weave, which is like essentially an angled backpedal to keep his leverage. Yeah, he's giving up ground to the outside, but he'd rather give up ground to the outside because he doesn't have any help to the inside. He doesn't want to chase you 50 yards across the field. So what Downs does is he attacks the outside shoulder and the outside hip of the DB. That is the only way that you can run this route. Because let's talk about it if he stemmed him. If he stemmed him and this DB weaved, he would have to break in front of him and that would screw up the spacing of the route and this DB would be all over him. That quarterback ain't throwing you that ball. We got to make sure we keep space, just like it's drawn up on paper. If the play is like, let's say this is the outside receiver, and let's say this is downs right here, and he's running a fade and he's running a post, it needs to look exactly like this. It can't look like this type of post because you've got another wide receiver on the left side of the field, maybe running a drag, maybe he's running a seam, and you're going to run right into him, you guys. So we need to keep spacing on the play. That's why it's important to know how to run routes. It comes down to having a high football IQ. So you want to attack the outside shoulder and outside hip. My goal is to get him to flip his hips or to open his hips and make him think fade or some kind of outside route so I could slip under him. Okay, so what Downs does is he uses the tempo change. So he comes off the ball, gives this little slow skip tempo, right? Now, the reason why he gives this skip tempo is to screw at the DB's timing. So many wide receivers run all of their routes the exact same speed, the exact same way every single time. Now, listen, if you're a beginner, I, I don't recommend trying to be super creative and change tempo. But if you feel like you're getting a hang of this route running thing, playing wide receiver, I recommend this because it's a way for the DB to not get our tempo. DBs are trying to match your speed. You you get to the third or fourth quarter of a game, he's going to be, he's going to know how fast you are because he's been going up against you every single snap just about. So this tempo change is a way to get this DB to stop his feet. So he changes tempo, he slows it down, and then he accelerates to the outside. Now you see hips and shoulders committed. He's got speed. He's cutting on a dime. All of those things that help us sell the route, like we talked about on that whip. Speed, stride, and body language. Those are the three most important things. So this looks a lot like a tempo change fate. And if you know anything about North Carolina's offense, they do a lot of that. They'll put downs on like a slot fade. They'll have him come out, hesitate, and then burst. All great route runners, fellas, can make their routes look the same. And that's exactly what he does. But the reason why he uses it is because of all of those coverage responsibilities that we talked about of this DB beforehand. It's all relative, fellas. You got to have the IQ. You got to have the skills above the neck. But you also have to have the skills below the neck to be an explosive wide receiver and a great route runner. So he changes that tempo, slows things down, accelerates at the outside shoulder to flip his hips or just to get him to open. And that's what gets him space on that route. That is a textbook way to run a post route or even a dig route versus that inside leverage off man coverage. Okay, so now this next example here is another great way of um, Josh Downs making his routes look the same. So he is going to be running kind of like a 10-yard out route. Could be considered a comeback route just by the angle that he takes off of this thing. But um, either way, it would be the same way. So he's doing this route against inside shade, like kind of off-man coverage DB on the goal line. So if I have to run an out route, number one thing, based on what we know in the last example, why is this DB inside shade? 
to take away the inside, right? So I am running an outside breaking route, which is away from his leverage. Great, that's perfect. But I can't just take off and go run the route. So let's play this full speed. So Downs comes off the ball, gives a little hesitation move, peak back move, and then breaks this thing off and is able to get a ton of separation on this DB. Now listen, this is probably more of like a strong safety linebacker type look. So he shouldn't be able to guard Downs anyways. So this goes for any wide receiver. This should be easy money in this situation. So when he's inside shade, we can't just take off and go run the route because that's exactly what the DB wants us to do. Anytime that we have a route that's away from the DB's leverage, that means that we are going towards his help. Now you might be thinking, what do you mean by help? He's in man coverage, the, the sideline's over there. He doesn't have any help. The corner's in man, he doesn't have any help. The sideline is his help because that cuts down our field. So if Downs would just take off and go run, what he's going to do is get hands on his waist, force him to that sideline so when he breaks, he doesn't even have any room to run this out route. And the quarterback ain't going to throw that because we can't throw an out route with no space and a DB right on his R hip. So we need to give him space. So off the line, I got to threaten him or at least get him to hesitate to his leverage. So that's what Downs does. He comes off, gives him a little move, gets him to hesitate. Now, when we push back up vertical to the route, that's what we have to actually do. We have to get vertical. I call it getting skinny. I have to get to the depth of the route and give the quarterback as much space as possible. What a lot of guys will do in this scenario is they will attack the DB's leverage and then they take off on the out route on an angle. That's exactly what the DB wants you to do. He wants you to cut down that space. He doesn't want to get threatened vertically because if we get him to open up his hips or think fade, now we could sell the route and have as much space as possible to run the, uh, the last part of the route, to accelerate out of the break. So he comes off here, gives him this little hesitation move, pushes up vertical, but you see how he gets skinny. He addresses vertically. He gives this little peek back move with his eyes to sell like he is doing a fade. It's all relative, fellas. If you were running a slot fade out of the slot, this is exactly how you would run it. You would go attack that back pylon. You'd get vertical. You'd have speed. You'd look back with your eyes. All of those things are making this DB think fade, and then he breaks it right off and gets that DB to stumble with plenty of space for the quarterback to lead us. You guys, it's all about pairing your routes together. To be an elite route runner like Downs is, you have to make your routes look the same. If you can't make them look the same and you have nine different ways to run nine routes, then you're not, then you're predictable. He knows that, okay, he's, when he does that move, he's running this route. But if you have, if you use this same move, that hesitation go and that peek back on a slot fade, on a comeback, on an out route, maybe even on a stop route, or maybe you do that peek back early and run a diamond release, all of those things are super unpredictable for a DB and he will not be able to gauge when you're doing that. Let's play this again full speed one more time. Great job by Downs making his routes look the same and then getting separation on that out route by winning on that fade ball. Okay, so now. This clip here is from Josh Downs at a high school showcase, and he is going to be running kind of like a, uh, like I would say like a quicker route. Let's, let's play this thing full speed. So he comes off the ball, attacks that DB's cushion, and runs this out route. Now this might be like a 10-yard out, quick out, 5-yard out. Either way, it applies the same way, but it's very similar to what we just talked about in terms of getting into the DB's cushion and not running straight there. So this is a problem that a lot of wide receivers have when they go up against a DB in one-on-ones is that they'll come off the ball, but this DB does something called a motor technique where he maintains cushion between the two of us. Now, Downs does a great job of closing that cushion. See how he comes off the ball, he hesitates, but this DB starts to inch or motor back, right? Keeping space between the two of them. Now, as a wide receiver, what you might want to do is, oh, he's backpedaling, he's giving me space, I'm just going to get right to the route. But remember, when there is space between the two of us, he has a good angle to be able to recover if it's a deeper route. So no matter what, I can't go past the depth of the break. But if I come off the ball and that DB starts to inch back, I got to get into his cushion the best we can. And that showcases Josh Downs has that knowledge. He knows how to run routes. I guarantee you he's not thinking about all this right now because this is way too much to think about in a live scenario. But I guarantee you he has repped this stuff out in a practice setting. He's talked it through. He's watched film. So he knows that it's just an instinct. Fellas, like I think of it like this because a play quarterback first is more, more of a natural thing for me to think about. Hopefully it is for you guys. A quarterback isn't thinking about his throwing motion in a game. He's not sitting back there with flying bullets coming out his head in the D-line, having to read a defense, and he's not thinking about, oh, is my release coming over the top, or am I, am I following through? It's a habit, because he's done it a million times. That's how you guys have to be with your routes. You got to have it engraved in your mind. Like your team, I guarantee you right now, if you're a high school receiver, you are probably not running more than eight routes. Gu guaranteed. You, you probably do not run uh, anything over, and maybe at the max nine if you guys have a wild offense. But you're probably not running that many different routes. You should have a plan 
for all of those routes versus the different coverage looks that you're going to see. Now, it might be simple. One week, you might have a team that does all zone coverage. That's easy. Then one week, you might have a DB who's pretty talented who likes to mix it up. He goes outside shade. They run cover two. He goes off man. you got to have a plan. But it's got to be so engraved into your head that in a setting like this, we are not even thinking about it, fellas. That's why I'm so detailed with this stuff. I don't mean it to say, hey, you got to think about all this stuff while you're going. But you have to be detailed with your process so in the game, it can be simple. All right, fellas, really want to thank you for watching. I really appreciate it. If you guys have any questions at all, don't hesitate to leave those in the comment section below. Always appreciate the feedback. It's always great to hear from you guys. And again, fellas, if you would like to come out and train with us in 12 different states this off season, check out that very first link in the description below. We'd love to have you out. I'll see you guys next time.